you messed it up. <laughs> You're stupid. <laughs> And today's Daily Dose of Stupid actually comes to you via our friends at AL.com. So there's an AL.com journalist, because as of course as everybody in the state knows, unless you're some kind of weird hermit that doesn't pay attention to anything going on around you, in this state you know that this weekend is LSU versus Alabama. And an AL.com journalist has blamed Trump for college boys sexually assaulting people. This is, I'm not kidding, this is the actual story that's going on here because, of course, President Trump is going to be attending the football game in Bryant-Denny Stadium uh, against LSU. So she is now saying that Trump is really to blame for uh, boys in college sexually assaulting people. I don't know how, but this is her explanation. We'll go ahead and, and pull this one up. So this is Abby Crane who is the, and I swear I'm not making this up, the women and gender issues reporter <laughs> for AL.com. Why they have a women and genders issues report, I don't know. But here's the tweet. Okay, I'm just going to say it. Remember when all us girls who went to the U, uh, to UA were talking to current UA girls about how guys seemed more aggressive slash emboldened post-16 election? Please be safe this weekend. Do not leave your girl alone. Buddy up. Don't take drinks from strangers, etc. All right, so a couple of things on this. First of all, I see the title of her job as being demeaning. Like you have her on there and she's only allowed to report on or take stories about women and gender. I don't even know what that means. But anyway, I find that somewhat offensive to suggest that a reporter should only be handling that particular, like, well, why do you even have a somebody assigned to that? But anyway, so looking at the tweet, first of all, shouldn't women pretty much do this all the time? It's regardless of who's in town or when the football game's going on, whether it's not even football season and you're not even a college student, you should never be at night leaving women by themselves um, to, you know, just walking down a dark alley or something like that. And you also shouldn't be taking drinks from people that are already open. Like that's a, that's a general rule. That has nothing to do with the president being in town. You should do that all the time. But what's hilarious is she's suggesting essentially that men are more apt to sexually assault or rape or do other untoward things towards women because president Trump's in town. In other words, President Trump's mere presence makes men want to sexually assault women. Like there's guys at the bar in Tuscaloosa looking around like, you know what? I wasn't, I wasn't going to, you know, just slap that girl on the butt, but Trump's in town might as well. Right. That's not how this works. <laughs> it's so absurd that that's the thing that, that her brain comes up with. And, uh, I think this is a, a classic case of, Trump derangement syndrome that you think that just Trump by Trump, just being in town, men are going to be more likely to sexually assault you. Uh, I don't see how anyone gets to that place mentally, but anyway, the thing is men have been acting like jerks around women since the dawn of time. Not all men, obviously, but men have been, you know, trying to sexually assault women. That's been something that has been a running theme in the human race since we've been around. The idea that Trump suddenly caused this or that men were emboldened or more likely to do so, it's just so stupid. How does anyone even come up with that? Now, even if that were the case, that I, I still don't believe that you could make a case to prove that President Trump getting elected or being in town is going to cause men to act more irrationally and more sexually aggressively than they would under normal circumstances. But the question is, is this even true? Did men even get more aggressive or emboldened? I still don't think that you could, you could tie that back to President Trump's election, even if you could prove that that were the case, that like after the 2016 election, all of a sudden guys at the University of Alabama became uh, sexual assaulters. I don't think that you could ever make that case and draw a correlation between those two. Or, or a cause between the two, even if you could show correlation. But the question is, is there even correlation? Like, can you show that after 2016's election, 
that these men got emboldened? Well, it's interesting because I found an AL.com article, the very publication which she works at, that seems to suggest that that's not the case. In fact, granted, we don't have data on 2016, 2017, 2018. That data just hasn't come out yet. I'm not sure why. I guess nobody's done a study on sexual assault at colleges. But I found some data from AL.com of all places, and they were citing their source, of course, but this came from them initially, uh, for the National Center for Education Statistics that show, and this is a headline from AL.com, on-campus sexual assaults climbed 52% in three years at Alabama colleges. Now look at that. It jumps from 23 to 32 to 35. That is a substantial jump. 52% is a lot. Wait a second. Look at the years. 2009, 2010, 2011. Well, that's weird. There's this sudden spike in sexual assaults. Who was the president in 2009 and 2010 and 2011? Because, oh, right, it was Obama. That's weird. There was a spike in sexual assault at the University of Alabama right after Obama got elected? Huh. Well, the only logical explanation is that President Obama being in office was causing men at the University of Alabama to sexually assault women. I mean, that's, that's the logical conclusion, right? No, that's stupid. And it's stupid to suggest that Trump getting elected had anything to do with it as well. Uh, and... By the way, let's actually look at a, another graph here real quick that shows the stats. It basically breaks down the, the graph that you just saw. This is a breakdown by school. So if you're looking at the University of Alabama specifically, you'll notice there's a jump from 1 to 9 in 2010, and then uh, it goes down a little bit to 3 in 2011. So still pretty minute at the college. By the way, just a, a side note here, this kind of breaks that myth that one in five women are sexually assaulted at college because you're looking at the University of Alabama. If that were true, even if you're looking at their highest year of nine, that would mean there would be only, oh, less than a hundred people at the University of Alabama. I'm guessing there's substantially more than that. But anyway, uh, these are the stats that break them up. And by the way, I I'm not trying to make a comparison here because this is, of course, horrible no matter where it takes place. But I'm just saying when the state was experiencing a 52% increase in sexual assaults, I want you to notice what university did not see an increase. Auburn. So I'll just leave that. You can do with it what you want. But it's so ridiculous to blame a politician for this. Is sexual assault a real problem at colleges? Absolutely. There's a reason that colleges, and I work at one, there's a reason that we work so hard to make sure it does not happen. But the idea that because somebody got elected, that now men are going to be emboldened to do stuff, that's just so patently absurd. Look, we all know that AL.com and its affiliates have had a very distinct left bend for a really long time. This is just one more piece of evidence to it. Now, y'all know that I am a big believer in personal liberty, and that means I think that you should be free to decide for yourself whether or not you like this video and subscribe to the Tactics YouTube channel. However, I will say this. You know who else never subscribed to my channel? Hitler. So the way I see it, you have two options. You can either like this video and subscribe to the Tactics YouTube channel, or you can be like Hitler. Totally up to you.